In this lecture, we will be examining the causes and effects of a period in U.S. history known as the market revolution. This is a time in which the American economy changed from an economy largely dependent on imports from Europe to a self-sufficient economy that not only saw the rise of internal commerce, but in which the United States became a major industrial force in international trade. We will examine the interrelated roles of transportation, communication, banking, labor, and industrialization in the emergence of the market revolution in the 19th century. The accompanying map shows the major roads, indicated by red lines, canals, indicated by purple lines, navigable rivers, indicated by blue lines, and railroads, indicated by white lines in the U.S. by 18. In the period from 1800 to 1850, many states used incentives to facilitate the development of turnpikes, canals, bridges, and railroads. Steamboats were especially significant in the first few decades of the 19th century. Robert Fulton gets credit as the first person to operate commercial steamboats, and in 1807, he started a steamboat service that connected Albany and New York City along the Hudson River. These ships helped connect many other cities via lakes, rivers, and canals, and steamboats helped cut costs on the delivery of commodities and merchandise. The Erie Canal, built between 1807 and 1825, kicked off this major wave of canal building, linking upstate New York and New York City. Eventually, the Erie Canal helped open up the Old Northwest, which, if you recall from earlier lectures, was Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, and Wisconsin. By 1850, American railroads further decreased travel time between many American cities. However, by 1860, advances in transportation had also worsened the sectional divides that had been merging, especially north versus south. This map shows the growth of canal and steamboat routes in the United States between 1825 and 1860. Canal routes are depicted by blue lines, and steamboat routes are shown in red lines. This next map shows the dramatic reduction in travel times between New York City and various eastern regions of the United States. This map shows the growth of railroads by the year 1850, indicated by a red line, and 1860, indicated by a purple line. You can see this decade from 1850 to 1860 was a decade of significant growth in American railroads. The market revolution also depended upon the rise of an urban working class that consisted of both skilled and low-skilled laborers. This rise was facilitated in part by the boom in European immigration to the United States in the 19th century. Immigrants provided cheap labor for industrial settings such as factories. This period is also noteworthy for the emergence of labor political unions in the 1830s that were often known as working men's associations. These groups solidified behind the idea that American workers needed political clout to protect their interests though working men's associations had not evolved into the full-fledged labor unions that appeared in the late 19th century in the United States. One of the most successful of these associations was the Mechanics Union of Trade Associations, which was formed in Philadelphia in 1827. This group represented workers as a class, not by trade, and advocated 10-hour days, fair wages, and the education of workers. This era also witnessed a rise in labor protests, especially in states such as Massachusetts and New York. At this time, workers possessed few legal rights, and many of these protests were broken up by state and local police forces. An example of the unrest of working Americans can be seen in the Flower Riot of 1837. The riot was caused in part by poverty and also by the rapidly increasing price of flour, which had more than doubled in many cities. These conditions were related to the banking panic of 1837. Rioters in New York demanded a fair price for flour, and they took to the streets to voice their anger. Hundreds of barrels of flour were seized by rioters after a flour dealer 
refused their demands. Police and military troops had to be sent in to break up the rioters. Invented by scientist Samuel F. B. Morse, the electromagnetic telegraph transmitted electronic signals across copper wire. In less than a decade, telegraph lines connected the larger East Coast cities. By 1854, 23,000 miles of telegraph lines connected various parts of the country. The first transatlantic telegraph cable was laid in 1858, and this innovation enabled rapid communication between Europe and the United States. And the U.S. Postal Service made increasing use of new technologies, such as the steamboat and the railroad, to greatly reduce delivery time between major U.S. cities. The role of mechanization and industrialization in the market revolution cannot be overlooked. This era is noted for the rise in interchangeable parts, which are components produced to such exact specifications that they emerge as almost perfectly identical. Interchangeable parts can be readily exchanged with one another, and no custom fitting or skilled repairmen may be needed. Eli Whitney's development of the cotton gin in 1793 quickly resulted in American cotton becoming widely available for export at highly competitive prices. Indirectly, the cotton gin resulted in the textile industry merging as the first true large-scale industry in American history. While the Bank of the United States and the Second Bank of the United States faced significant political opposition, both of these institutions helped dramatically increase the amount of available capital for American investment. What became known as free banking laws emerged in the 1830s to increase access to capital, and state and local banks especially played an important role in expanding the money supply and the availability of credit in the market revolution. This map shows the location and density of cotton mills in New England that appeared by the year 1850. Agriculture was an important component of the market revolution indirectly. Uh, in the period of 1800 to 1840, commercial cotton expanded across the southern United States due to the cotton gin. And the United States became the world's largest exporter of cotton. The mechanical reaper that... Cyrus McCormick patented was at least five times more efficient than hand harvesting wheat crops. The steel plow, which was invented by John Deere, helped increase Midwestern corn and grain production to record highs. However, New England farming communities increasingly struggled as these farms lacked sufficient yields for market settings and many of them were smaller, unlike the larger Midwestern farms, which were increasingly commercial in nature. Finally, the market revolution was not without its critics. The desire for profit, translated as greed, was seen by many Americans as a threat to the public good. The periodic boom and bust cycles that occurred made for both economic as well as social instability in the United States. For many workers, especially those in low-skilled work settings, irregular employment was a fact of life. There was no un unemployment insurance at this time. And there were a few laws to protect workers or to help them when they were unemployed. In general, this was an age of increasing economic inequality of the United States, and many observers during this time period exhibited skepticism about a world of haves and have-nots. The increased mechanization and industrialization resulted in the rapid disappearance of traditional artisans and craftsmen, and this was a source of concern for many Americans. Finally, many Americans worried about the problem of wage dependency, commonly known at the time, and even today in some circles, as wage slavery. To some contemporary observers, having a low-wage factory job was little better than being a plantation slave. <laughs>